I, I wanted to knock football in the head when I was 21, 20, 22, 23, I'd say. Yeah. I nearly went to America, nearly went on a um, scholarship to, to New York and go and play over there because I'd had enough of it. Yeah. I'd had enough of the culture, I'd had enough of the way I was getting treated by Wolves at the time. Yeah. And I've said to you, as well, like, it just wasn't right for me. Just just totally fell out of love with, with football. Didn't even want to train. It was yeah. a horrible position to be in. Did you ever did you ever get to that level? Uh, many, many times. Like even when things were going well and I scored a goal, I'd wake up the next morning and go, I can't be bothered doing this. Mm. And I'm sure for people who've never played the game professionally must listen to that and go, What hell How, can why? you feel like yeah. that? But it's it's the ups and downs of it. It's honestly it's it you can't I'm sure you understand it, but people just don't understand how hard it is mm. to do that and you know, imagine stacking a shelf in Tesco and somebody standing behind you saying, that, you know, with the awards that you use to us, it's not just, you know, the normal F and the Jeff, and it's, most of it gets personal, you know. Anything home. that's in the media that's personal mm. will be brought up in yeah. the crowd, and, you know, it's just, a, it's not really nice. And When did the depression kick in? Like, I know you've spoke about that in the last couple of years, but, and at the time you didn't, you were saying it's been, you've had it for years yeah. on and off, and, like, what, like when, when you look back now, when do you think it started, or what started it? Um, in in the nicest possible way, what started it was probably me and my wife, me my wife to be at the time, and I was I was floating through life in England, you know, I was just playing games. Eventually, things weren't going well for me at Barnsley, and I, ju- I didn't have the bite between my teeth to get myself going again. I I couldn't kickstart myself, and my wife and the kids were at home. I was like. This just isn't weighing up here for me. The pro, the cons were outweighing the pros all of a sudden, and I just, I actually, we were playing Preston at home in, in uh, sorry, in Deepdale, so I was allowed to stay at home on Christmas Day, and I woke up Christmas, uh, sorry, Boxing Day, and there was blood all over the, the sitting room floor, like, and the taxi driver who was coming to get me to bring me to the game was like, he wanted to ring me man, and dad. It was like blood, and I got up and got dressed, got cleaned myself up, and went to do the warm up. And as I, he put me on the bench, thank God, I thought it was actually due to play. As as I turned, we were doing little sprints, and as I turned the sprint, the stadium just started to turn black and black. I couldn't see. And I made some excuse that I had a flu or something and went in. And I was he told me to sit behind the bench. Mm. And I rang my wife like on the slide behind the bench, and that was it. We went home that day. I, I didn't even tell the club. They actually sent me letters six months later saying, uh, you've been sacked and blah blah but <laughs> this was six months ago. And... That's but that's the life of a footballer. It's up and down and up and down. But it they, wasn't an they didn't help you at all, though, to try and deal with that. Or because no. there's a lot, there's a lot made as well about the PFA. Now I have, I don't want to be too critical of them, but I think they're very reactive. They're not proactive. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if something comes out, they'll jump on that. Yeah. But they do anything to try and help. Um, not. It was somebody from the PFA, Clark Carlisle tried to help me a lot, but it wasn't in the PFA capacity, if you know what I mean. It was as a mate because I played with him at uh, Bournley and he was coming over to Preston at the time. And I, I see myself and Clarkie a lot now. So the only person I would listen to was Clarkie mm. and he had a great way about him. He was really, such a nice fella and the way he spoke to me really opened my eyes but there was still a little blip mm. after Clarkie that I had to get over. And I think you really have to, re- you have to hit that rock bottom and you have to either say, am I going to, get straight and keep going or am I just going to try and live my life and I, I remember do you ever play with Wayne Henderson yes I remember no, he, he came into my house and lit him crying one day after a Preston game he was on the bench and he, he just slammed a whiskey bottle down and he's like I don't think I'll be able to pick my kids up when they're born he, he hasn't got any kids but because his back was so bad he started sobbing and I was like this is a grown man crying like picking your kids up is more important than playing a game of football to me and it always will be so when I seen Hendo doing that, I was thinking and thinking, if I keep drinking and keep playing here, and I, cu- I couldn't stop the drinking at the time, so I kept drinking and playing, but eventually I got to a good enough place where, you know, I'm, I don't I haven't drank since November now, so... So you're nearly a year off it. Nearly a year off it, yeah, but Christmas is coming up, so who knows? <laughs> now, everything's... I'm, this is three years of therapy later, you know, to get all this stuff out, and like I say, I, I like talking about it now because I think it's... A lot of people need to hear this. Yeah, well, 
Did you, did you know any about the stuff no. when you went over? No. It's, no, it's no. all rose and you're going to be first a First and foremost, it's got to help you. Like it's got to, it's got to be beneficial for you. And I think, like, the, I read the article a few weeks ago yeah. in the Herald. And for, I was honestly, I felt so bad. I felt so bad that I should have done more. I could have done more to try and help you when when I was at Blackburn. But then don't realise to the extent, and then you go off and you're playing up, you're playing up only, you're playing at press, and then obviously I don't, I'm not seeing you on a daily yeah. basis. Then well, that, that's not, that's no like. Although I was a child, I, I wasn't nobody. It's nobody's duty to mind me there when we're on the football pitch. And but that was it. I what did we train from half ten till half twelve, and I'd be back in my house at half twelve, and you know what, two and a half grand a week sitting in the house. What are you gonna do at mm. seventeen, eighteen? There's only one thing on my mind, and um, unfortunately, it was on my mind till I was a lot older to reverse what I'd done to me body. What's the plan now? So is it a constant? battle to try and stay on top of this with the, the people you have around there, good people you've just mentioned, your wife, you just had a baby as well. Uh, it's not a battle anymore um, at the start it was a battle but at the start I didn't realise I was trying to give up drink I thought I was just, uh, I'll give it two weeks if I can and you know, you start to stretch it and stretch it and stretch it and before I knew it I'm sitting here, I'm nearly a year off and I have no, no ambition to go back to it at all. No ambition to go back to dream, what about football? Uh, if you're not ask, playing at the moment, eh? Not playing at the moment, but... <sighs> if you put that in a box, like you were saying, and you're kind of saying, that's just not important. Not not important anywhere not, near as much well, as the the family side of things and what you want to do. Yeah, well, I, like I say, we're only, we only had a, a little boy two weeks ago, so given football another half... I, I would love to play, but I'd love to play for like, uh, Sherry Street or East Wall, just on an amateur thing and just... To enjoy. Just have a bit of laugh again and not... You know, people going, oh, your touch was poor there, or you should have pressed there. Just forget the tactics and have a game of football. Can like, you remember the last time you played football and you enjoyed it? Uh, I don't think I've ever enjoyed a professional game of football. It's more... You're, you're even, do, even Ireland? Even Ireland was... It was more nerve-wracking to think what could go wrong rather than what could I actually go and achieve here. It was, right, just keep it steady, just don't do anything stupid here, Keith. And that's always what I wanted to do, was just, right, don't do anything stupid rather than actually going and Whereas kick your it on. game is the total opposite. Right? You you yeah. had the attributes to, to be the game-changer. You were the, like, yeah. the duff, you know, like the, with those type of qualities. So, like, to, to imagine that you were even thinking that kind of the game, because if I was with you and you were playing regular, I'd be, like, literally wanting to get you the ball to win us games but you were thinking yeah. just don't do anything wrong well I, I did, a lot of that could have been to do with Trap as well he was that way minded especially mm. with his wingers he didn't want to leave the defensive side to uh, to expose but yeah I was always like that it was always, and I know when I come on against Argentina I, I done okay I went past Zabaleta a few times but people made a big thing about that like oh you just skinned Zabaleta at the time he was an aging man and I was coming into my prime and well, my prime, what was it, 21 or something? Mm. But, yeah, it did turn out to be my prime, didn't it? Yeah, well, no. uh, I don't think I enjoyed it. I actually get the first thing I did after that game was go down and give my granddad my jersey because it was his birthday and he was down in Ring's End. So I, I literally, I walked from the Aviva to, just like I did today, back down <laughs> to uh, my granddad and gave him the jersey. And it was more, I was really proud to be able to give him my jersey rather than, like, enjoying the game of football itself. It was, have you, did you enjoy football games? Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. You seem surprised. I did, and well, I definitely was a very enjoyed. angry man on, on the pitch you were. Yeah, that's the I way I played. The, yeah. That's the way I played. I was really highly strong, and I was mm. really... You'd probably testify to this. A few other lads have said I was always moaning and shouting and screaming. And yeah. But mm. I, I, I loved that battle side of it. Whereas yeah, I had different... I'm saying I had different qualities to you. So what, I felt like that side of my game would get the best out of you yeah. if I got you at it and was giving you the ball and scrapping in midfield and doing doing certain things. Depends yeah. what club I was at. But yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. And with, with Ireland, it was just loved every second of it. Yeah, well, don't get me wrong. I was, I was extremely proud and all that stuff. I was delighted to do it. But did I actually enjoy the game? No, particularly, you know. It was so when you look back now, where, where, would you, where would you change it? What point do you think then I should have changed it? So again, like... Certain parallels. I spoke to you about. I was willing to give up football. Didn't like it. I had to get out of Wolverhampton. I went to Hull. Hated Hull. I yeah. felt like I was living in Russia. It was like <laughs> the far end of the bleeding earth. It was ridiculous. So it wasn't until I went to MK Dons 
that I actually fell back in love with football again. You're were, you were speaking about I just want to go and enjoy football. That's where I started to enjoy football yeah. again, and it was from then. Whereas could have easily, you know, if that didn't go well, just yeah. fall out. And what was I then? I was twenty five, maybe. Well, I think that happened to me at Preston to a certain extent, but even when I left Blackburn, do you remember when I, I crashed my car? Mm. You were you were training that day, yeah. right? And Sam Allardyce wouldn't even speak to me. He sent me in, and uh, Doctor Batty had to break me to do was get out and blah de blah. But some of the things that went on, like behind the scenes, Irish young Irish fifteen year old will never know these things. And like, how do you how do you speak? There's nobody there. Like remember, our own hands used to yeah. do, but there's nobody there. And I think there is a real need for that. There's a, there is a need for somebody to speak to them and just to advise. Say, them. listen, if if you don't, if you're not the next Damien Duff, mm. don't worry about it. I like. There's somebody going into your man dad at 13 saying this fella's going to be the next name in Duff, there's going to be millions. Like, I remember my ma looking at houses out in Bray, and like, that's the sort of pressure that's getting thrown on you. Like, I'm inverting you now, like, they weren't doing it on purpose, but these little things are just on your back, and you're like, I'm trying to just have a game of football here, and it goes out of it, the fun goes out of it with, with the professionalism. Mm. Listen, we could go on talking about this forever. I'm glad you're looking well. I'm glad things are going well in terms of being off the drink. Stay strong, all right? Yeah, of course. It's been a pleasure. Do you want your point? point? <laughs>